Hey guys, it's me, Steve WB, and welcome back to my channel. And today, we are going to be talking about the DJI OM4 and why I'm sending this back to where it came from. Just kidding. I'm really not going to throw this gimbal. But what I'm going to give you today is the review that you actually need to see about the OM4. Not the fluffy one that you get from everybody else about how it's the best smartphone gimbal ever. That's debatable. We're going to get into it. Let's find out why. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about with the DJI OM4 is uh, the first one of the first selling points that they sell it as is you never have to balance. You never have to balance this thing. Okay, that is a lie, first of all, because as you can see, it does have a clip that comes with your phone. By the way, the clip sucks because if you have any kind of a case other than like a super slim case, you have to take your case off every time you want to use it. That's very annoying to me because I have a thicker case that's got like a wallet on the back and it's totally useless. But anyway, besides that fact, it's got a little magnet in here that sticks to the actual gimbal. So yes, and they, they show it like, bam, you throw it on there and you line up the two little dots on the magnet, turn it on. And you're good to go, right? Have two different modes, whatever. You know, you can do horizontal. You can do vertical. I mean, it's perfect, right? Didn't have to balance it, did I? Well, guess what? The first time you install this little clip, you still have to balance it. So, technically, you do have to balance it. Your other option is it comes with a little stickable tab that will stick on other cases and stick on the back of your phone and it's a piece of two-sided tape and they give you this little plastic guide that you lay over this by the way which did not fit this phone the Note 20 Ultra maybe it was a little too big so I'm, I'll still end up kind of trying to eyeball it and I I take this and it's got a guide and you you put the little metal thing on there with a the two-sided tape and get it all lined up and stick it on there press it on make sure it's going to be there forever stick it on the gimbal out of balance. So now I have to pry this two-sided tape off my phone case without destroying my phone case. But even if I did get it on there correctly and it did stay stuck to my phone case, there's always the risk of that two-sided tape giving up and you're doing some kind of action shot or, or panning and your phone falls off and it's on the ground. So I don't really like the little sticky tape idea. And of course, with the little clamp like this, you gotta stretch it out kind of far for my phone. Let's see, it's just like a... And I can balance it quick on this because I know exactly where it goes now because I made a mental note of how close to the volume key it is. So I can get it on there pretty quickly, but I gotta like really stretch it to get over this phone. And my concern is if I use this on my phone without a case all the time, when you go to take it off, I'm worried that this metal is going to end up scratching the back of my phone as I pull it off to take it off. you got to be extra careful not to scratch the back of your phone. So with those highlights made of this wonderful $150 gimbal, the ideas that I just shared with you actually were not the killers for me and as to why I'm going to send this back and why this is not as good as everybody says it is. So let's take it outside, do some test shots, and we'll talk about it some more. Okay, so here, for demonstration purposes too, is another thing that aggravates me about this little gimbal here. It's got a sport mode. You click the trigger once, and then you hold it, and you can turn real fast if needed, if you were filming action sports or kids on sugar, whatever the case may be. So I find that if I do this, I come back, look at the position of the camera, it's turning this way. So you constantly have to readjust the angle of the camera. After just one spin there and one spin back, it's out of whack. 
A gimbal is supposed to make my life easier. I shouldn't have to be constantly adjusting the horizon and the pan. It's a never ending battle that just drives me insane. And now let's talk about the stabilization. Is it really worth it when it comes to a phone? Is phone stabilization good enough that you don't even need a gimbal? We're going to find that out too. And I'm also going to do a solo stabilization test with just, uh, you know, the gimbal and the phone so you can see how shaky it is with a normal walk. I know it's normally suggested that you would use like a ninja walk or whatever when you're using a gimbal, but I'm not going to walk through Disney World heel to toe like a freaking ninja, okay? I got places to go and kids to chase. The ninja walk is out of the question. Okay, so here we are just doing a normal walk with the OM4 on my phone. Horizon's not level as usual, even after adjustment, which drives me crazy. And I'm just doing a normal walk. Let's see how nice this footage looks. And I'm also going to, a lot of the times when I'm walking through Disney for my family channel, I like to hold it up high because people don't like you sticking a camera in their face. And when you're walking down Main Street USA, you got to get over their heads to get a clear shot of everything you're trying to see. So let's see how stable this wonderful footage looks. Okay, so the wind's picked up. It's a little later in the day. I forgot to take this footage this morning. This is an actual walk of me just holding my cell phone with no gimbal to see how the stability compares to my phone being on the OM4. So which one looks more stable to you? Okay, so now we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison walking through the yard with the Osmo Pocket on the left and the Note 20 Ultra on the DJI OM4 on the right. Gonna get off the grass. Just take a stroll down the sidewalk. As you can tell, it's early because the birds won't shut up. But whatever, it is what it is. I guess they have a voice too. So we'll spin. And the OM4 is already getting very laggy and correcting back to the forward position. Of course, the Oso Osmo Pocket does not have such issues. But this is going to be your side-by-side -side comparison test with a real gimbal. Even though it's technically made by the same company, I guess. Okay, so right here, I have a real gimbal. It's a Fayutech. G6 Plus with my old smartphone on it. And the whole point of having a gimbal is to get more cinematic shots and of course to keep your shots steady, which the OM4 is not the most steady, but it does okay. But I'm filming real low a lot of the times. My kids are small. And whenever I'm filming at Disney World, I try to keep things at a kid's point of view, a kid's perspective, just to make it seem more kitty friendly I guess I don't know but with this gimbal I can hold it like this and you can also do the nice little sweeping shot where you start at the ground and you work your way up okay one of my favorite shots start low bring it up or back up and come down great that's what gimbal should do Let's get the OM4. Here's the OM4. That's about it right there. If you go like this or you try to come down, you're very limited as to your mode. And of course the gimbal's a total wreck after that. But So if you're going down, that's about as steep of an angle as you can get before it starts messing up the camera so I can't walk around like this and film my children or I can't walk around like this and film my children which normally I hold it at waist level but and that, that's it's just a killer for me and of course just by doing that and coming back up the stupid gimbal six ways sideways from Sunday next Monday 
constantly recentering this thing. And when I recenter it, it always kind of views the sky a little too much. So you always got to pull it back down a little bit to make it usable again. This is all stuff that people don't tell you when DJI sends you a free gimbal, okay? And I'm not hating on those people. I hope to be one of those people one day. But if you're like me and a small YouTuber and you're buying this stuff with your own money, you need to know the quirks before you jump on Amazon and you order this stuff because uh, you end up returning it like me. So that's another thing that aggravates me. Now I know, of course, there's going to be people who watch this video and say, oh, silly Steve, to fix this, all you have to do is go in the menu and do that. Or to fix this, all you have to do is that. And the way I look at it is, I'm a basic consumer. I am not an electronics engineer. I'm not a software designer. And I don't care about all these crazy ass features that I'm never going to use. The typical person, when they buy an OM4, you want to slap your phone on it, turn it on, and it work. You don't want to have to adjust the horizon. You don't want to have to constantly recenter the gimbal and reset your angles of the camera. You want to be able to get all the proper gimbal moves. You know, I should be able to, let me turn this thing on, in which this thing has plenty of quirks too. Maybe I'm just not a gimbal person, but I should be able to hold it like a flashlight. I should be able to turn it upside down with no problems while I'm filming. If I can't do this, that means the gimbal, the only point of that gimbal is for stabilization. And let me tell you, the stabilization sucks. I'm going to show you a clip of me walking down Main Street USA with this gimbal and it's shakier than, well, I can't say that on YouTube, but it's very shaky. Let's take a look at that real quick. Now all the quirks and all the disadvantages that I've pointed out on this little OM4, that's just my personal preference. If you're a gimbal person and you're really good with them and you don't mind the constant adjustments, then it could be for you. It's, it's cheap. It's 140 something bucks for a gimbal and it's supposed to be amazing. It's too fidgety for me. There's too much correction that has to be done every time you go to shoot. There's been too many times that I've tried to pan and it, it glitched and just ruined the shot. And so I'm sitting there retaking shots. And when you're running or you're trying to catch a moment, it's too late, you've already missed it. You know, it could be right for you. I'm not trying to discourage you from buying it. I'm just trying to show you the quirks and the problems that I have with the OM4 and why I'm sending it back. I'm Steve WB and I'm out.